A quote has been circulating for many years. China will be the leader in the 21st century. You don't need me to tell you. The quote was circulating in China. The world's most populous country has suffered through wars, natural disasters, and economic depressions. When most people heard about this quote many years ago, they called it wishful thinking. But China's rapid growth during the last 25 years raised not only everyone's eyebrows, but also the hope that China will one day lead the world. Imagine how a country with 13 billion people can change. The shuttle bus driver in Guangzhou told our team today, when he got his first job 25 years ago driving a shuttle bus, his paycheck was a mere 25 renminbi a month. Now he gets 15,000 renminbi a month doing the same job. That is 100 times rise in just 25 years. Guangzhou's Beiyun Airport is dotted with flowers extending for miles around the modern airport. The subway system runs throughout the city with over a 1,500 year history. But China's growth is now under the shadow of the trade war. China changed when modernization started under Deng Xiaoping in 1980. Good quality and cheap labor combined with cheap land and tax incentives made China the place treasure hunters found their gold. But those advantages have changed. The trade war with America seems to have stopped the oxygen flow. Will China fall from its high point it has held during these 25 plus years of rapid bloom? It is hard to answer that question, but it does not mean we can't find the answer. For 1300 years, China's prophecy found in Tui Bei Tu has predicted correctly every major event. Do you think the answer to this question would be hidden in Tui Bei Tu? Tui Bei Tu? Is that a joke? How can a 1300 year old book know about what will soon face us in the 21st century? If there are only 60 poems, how can China's economy be foretold as one of the prophecies? How dare a team based in America try to solve the Chinese prophecy? Good questions, but let me ask you, how many times have people found clues for the future in Tui Tu? Not many, right? One story about the last emperor of China warning about Japan's defeat in 1925 seemed interesting, but could not be confirmed. 350 years ago, Jin Chen Tong compared history and Tui Bei Tu, then wrote notes outlining the prophecies that were fulfilled. But the accuracy only applied to historical facts. He failed to predict future events. But mysteries remain unsolved when no one unlocks them. I don't want to say we have solved ancient mysteries, but we sure have tried. Our many Nostradamus decodings carved the 500-year-old prophecy with a new knife. And we did the same thing to the 1300-year-old Tui Bei Tu. So, what have we found? We first went through the whole book and learned it like no one ever has. We compared historical events and names of historical figures. This gave us an understanding of how the authors hid the clues. We found so many interesting facts. We are also in the process of making China's foretold dynasty history in 1300-year-old Tui Bei Tu. And we found many names hidden that no one had noticed. Like the Taping rebel 200 years ago, showed the rebel's name, his son's name, his last loyal king's name, the general who defeated him and the general who finished his empire. Compare that with today's fake news. It is 10 times better. Armed with my newfound decoding guide, I found both names for General Chiang Kai-shek in poem 40. China's leader Mao Zedong and Chao Yilin's names were also hidden, and I found it predicted the outcome of the Chinese Civil War. Then in poem 41 it shows Deng Xiaoping and how he changed China and got Hong Kong back. And the year his power would end, and the year when Hong Kong would become part of China again. Believe me, it's all there. But because most people tried to decode based on the words, they failed to notice what was hidden inside the characters. 
And then poem 42 showed the Korean War and the United States involvement. The countries involved and the year of Taiwan's fate turning, 1952. Check on the characters, the meanings, and how the poem hid the true meanings by making you think the other way. But Chinese words have multiple meanings. The true meanings in this poem were not really hidden. It was under the sun all this time, just no one saw it. But what help can we find in Tuibei 2 if we can only find out its true meaning after the event it talked about has already unfolded? Since Tuibei 2 is so accurate, we can know and control our future if we can crack the code before it happens, right? Of course, and that is why we thought we decoded Poem 43. I thought Poem 43 is about the China-Taiwan relationship. But with the news of Huawei's CFO's unexpected arrest, I took another look at the poem and what I found even shocked our own team. I found Huawei, its founder, Ren Zhongfei, his daughter, Meng Wanzhou, are all in the poem. Then people started to attack me for our predictions. They called the decoding wrong and us crazy. Look, because these events have not yet happened, you can't call us wrong because we don't know what may happen. You can call us trying to decode the prophecy wrong, which I would disagree because although I am not 100% sure if my decoding is right or wrong, I am sure we are the first to uncover the secret link between the trade war and poem 43. So what should we do now? If we crack number 43, the next thing to do is to crack number 44. We thought this one is about the talks between China's President Xi and Taiwan's President Ma in 2015. As we can see President Xi's last name here and Taiwan's President Ma's unusual first name number nine here. But since Tuibei 2 follows a strict timeline, finding the trade war number 43 made me wonder if there is more to number 44 that we have not yet found. Then the lucky break came today. As our newly crowned princess, Mr. Decoder, was flying back from her royal ceremony in Indonesia, she had another 20 hours on the plane with nothing better to do than to stare at poem number 44. I don't know if you remember, she broke poem 43 during her 20 hour flight to Indonesia. And now she's done it again on the <laughs> flight back. Let's start by looking at the short poem. Sun and moon glorified the sky. Shadowy figures now gone. Hundreds of birds flying in two wings with four legs. And the long poem reads, China now has a wonderful leader. If you can't call him hero, calling him the wise one. Neighbors from four corners called him my lord. Problems gone, nine countries cherish prosperity. Please note the man standing in the picture armed with a bow. A bow symbolizes Taiwan and has appeared in poems number 41, 44, and 46. I do think Taiwan played an important part in the poem, but I found many more clues than what can be easily spotted. I think the trade war will be a war like a new game of Mahjong. The players are still there, but everyone comes in with a new slate. But overall, everyone will face a weakened global economy. And to survive, exporters need to find new markets. And small economies need to be allies with the big ones. And I think that is how China will lead. Look here. Do you see a currency symbol? How about here? The word B may be a hint of currency, and the word Yi seemed odd appearing here. Could it mean translation and also money exchange? This may be what nine countries prosperous means. Let me show you how many countries I found. Kali, the other name for Korea. Mongku, Mongolia. Thai, Thailand. Fe, Philippines. Khao Main, Cambodia, Lai, Malaysia, Rer, Sun symbolizes Japan, Bo, 
Taiwan, plus China is nine countries. But what role Japan will play remains a mystery, as the following poem clearly shows a conflict between China and Japan. Does this mean the nine countries prosper on their own? Or through some alliance? I can't really say, but the moon can mean Muslim countries, and that is for sure a major target market when China wishes to divert its trading reliance on America. You may wonder where is Taiwan in the poem? Well, we can see the one standing, carrying a bow, but with the countries mentioned in the poem, shouldn't Taiwan be part of it too? Well, look at the word yi. Do you see the word ren? Running through the center of the bow, is it possible that the Chinese one will be the currency soon? How will China recover from the big trade war blow? Believe it or not, it is also hinted at in the poem. I know you'll think I'm crazy, but do you see Huawei's founder's name here? I think it means China will recover through technological advances. I don't think China will bow for Meng Wanzhou. She may become the martyr and live in a U.S. jail, and Huawei will advance further in technology and lead the world. Has anyone's name ever appeared in more than one poem? Actually, yes. China's only female emperor, Wu Zitian, appeared multiple times. Will the renminbi become the world reserve currency? Well, it already has occasionally, but I think its influence may soon change. Many people disagree with me because my approach is different from theirs. And some people decided to vote against me before even reading my decoding because they don't think someone without a PhD in Chinese history could decode Tuibei Tu. But what you need is an open heart and a creative mind to decode Tuibei Tu. You may wonder if the future is really set, why should we work hard? Isn't our future set also? Yes, the future may be set, but we were given a chance to live this beautiful life in this beautiful world. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift. That is why we call it present. This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.